Well, if you think about it, the formula that we've been using here over and over is that the force is the field times the charge. But I really wanted to do a lot of examples to show this should just seem like common sense. This is not a formula we should have to look up. If you know that the units are newtons per coulomb, then clearly, if you know the number of coulombs, the way to find the force is to multiply them, just, that, just by based on unit analysis. If one coulomb gets three newtons of force, then you just multiply by how many coulombs you have to figure out the total amount of force you're getting. So this should be a very common sense formula. Sometimes this formula is written like this to solve it for E. But if this is common sense, then this should be common sense too. Again, this is common sense since we know the units. Since the field is newtons per coulomb, it should be force over charge. Force over charge. One thing you might notice here is notice, uh, though we've only been using this formula to find the magnitudes, we used this rule for the directions. So again, I'm going to put in dots to show that we're only going to put in positive numbers here. We're only going to use this formula to find magnitudes because there's a much easier way to find the directions. We can just use these rules to find the directions. Uh, maybe I should go on here then. So suppose that Q naught was equal to negative 10 coulombs. What could you tell me about the force then? Um, it's 30 newtons, but it the right, like the right. Yeah. It would still be 10 times 3 for 30 for the magnitude, but now we have a test charge that's negative. So now we know that the direction of the electric field is opposite to the direction of the force. So that would be in this direction since the field is still to the left. Mm -hmm. So why is it so useful to know the electric field at a point in space? Because then that makes it very easy to figure out what a bunch of different forces might be based on what the charge is at that point. Okay. Now one thing to keep in mind is um, an electric force is exerted on a charge. We talk about the force on a charge. But you don't talk about the field on a charge. You talk about the field at a point in space. So it's important to be careful with our prepositional phrases. We talk about the force on a charge, but we talk about the field at a point in space. And this is important because it's possible that there might not be any test charge at all at a particular point in space. So this is hypothetical information. This tells us that if we had a one coulomb charge at this point in space, then it would feel three newtons. But that doesn't mean there really is one coulomb there. There might be two coulombs, or ten coulombs, or there might be nothing there at all. This is just hypothetical information. Okay. So the way I think about the electric field is that it's like a price. So let's say you go to the store. Well, when you go to the store, you might see that the price of apples is, say, $3 per apple. So it's like a rate. That's right. It's like a rate. Mm -hmm. What does that mean if you see that the price of something is $3 per apple? Well, that means that if you bought one apple, it would cost you $3. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that everyone goes in, that goes in buys one apple? Well, no. But this is very useful because it makes it very easy to figure out how much you would spend on any amount of apples. For example, how much would it cost this person to buy six apples? $18. Well, wait. Actually, I was mistaken. It wasn't six apples. It was seven apples. Well, then it would be easy to see that would be 21. The useful thing about a price is that it makes it, if you go to one price, it's very easy to find out, figure out how much it costs to buy any number of apples. Well, that's why the electric field is useful. If you know the electric field at a point in space, it makes it very easy to figure out what the force would be on any test charge there. Okay. Um, but again, um, it's very possible that someone might go into a store and not buy any apples. Just because the apples have a price doesn't mean that you're going to buy it. So this is hypothetical information. It's telling you what would happen if you bought one apple. Just like this is telling us what would happen if there were a one coulomb charge at that point in space, which there may or may not be. There might be a bigger or smaller charge, or there might be no charge at all. What determines how big or small a charge is? Like, what does that, what does that mean? Really? How big or small a charge is? Yeah. Well, um, the only answer I can give to you is it just depends on how much charge it has. Yeah. Um, now, the basic units of charge are electrons and protons. So for example, if something has many excess electrons, yeah. it would be very negative. Okay. 
And if something has been stripped of a bunch of electrons, then it would have more protons and electrons and it would be negative. Okay, I need to make that connection. I got right. it now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's about the best answer I can give. Yeah. Now, like, like your textbook says, in a philosophical sense, no one knows what charge is, in a deep philosophical sense. All we can say is charge is the, is the thing that creates electric forces. Mm -hmm. right. But in a practical matter, charges basically come from protons and electrons. And you can also charge by like rubbing things. That's right. Okay. Because when you rub things together, you're actually stripping electrons off. That's the reason why like, if you rub a, uh, a balloon against, uh, against something, it'll, it'll get a charge because it's gaining or losing electrons. Yeah. Yeah. So as a practical matter, um, you know that in normal chemistry, everything has the same number of protons and neutrons and is neutral. Mm -hmm. But if you add or strip electrons from something, then it can have a, a, a charge buildup. And that's when you get electric forces. Okay. Thanks. But most things in life are neutral. That's why you were able to get through a whole semester of physics without thinking about electric forces. Mm -hmm. Let's do another example. If this is the electric field, what would be the force on this test charge? Um, it would be 20 newtons. Good. And then on the y direction? Or up? Good. Why is it up? Well, the field is down, but this is a negative test charge. For a negative test charge, the field and the force should be in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. um, so this should be up. One really big mistake that people tend to make is a lot of the time, they start thinking that the field is the same thing as the force. It's probably unfortunate that they both start with the letter F. They sound similar. So for example, people tend to assume that if the field is down, then the force has to be down. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. For a negative charge, the field and the force are in opposite directions. Yeah. a different type of problem. Here we have a negative 3, 2 Coulomb test charge. Now I'm going to tell you the force, which is 8 newtons. Let's figure out what the field would be. You might have to work that out on paper. So first of all, direction-wise, because the test charge is negative, we know that the force in the field must have opposite directions. So if this is to the left, this is to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the easiest thing to do here is to focus on the units. We know that the units for the electric field are newtons per coulomb. Well, how many newtons are we dealing with? Eight. And how many coulombs are we dealing with? Three. So the field is eight-thirds of a newton per coulomb. Mm -hmm. But if you want to check that, you could use this formula. Here's the basic formula that relates force and field and charge. So you can solve that to see that the field is the force over the charge. And that would again give you 8 thirds here. But we should almost not even need this. For example, suppose I told you that you bought uh, three apples and it cost you $12. What's the price of apples? Um, $4 per apple. Right. 
you know that the units for price are dollars per apple. Well, just based on that, it should be clear that the way you find a price is the $12 divided by the three apples. That's the same thing that we did here. The field is newtons per coulomb. So it's just the number of newtons divided by the number of coulombs. So this formula should almost be superfluous, but it's, it's good to have it as a backup. Mm -hmm. um, one good thing, uh, notice that we don't plug, if you are using the formula, you don't plug in the signs. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the formula, that's why I'm putting in these dots. The purpose of the formula is just to give us the magnitude. We already have a perfectly good way to figure out the directions based on our, our verbal description here. So I didn't plug in a negative three here. Of course, if you're solving a problem, it might not be good enough to say that the field here is to the right. It might be better to say that it's positive 8 thirds if to the right is your positive direction. Mm -hmm. So the direction of the field can also be described with a sign. But the sign doesn't come from the formula, it comes from this idea. 